Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about the bullish and bearish cases for Cardano. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on Twitter where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. So if you're someone who's been following the Cardano um, ecosystem, if you've been following the price of ADA more recently, you probably noticed that ADA has been getting hit pretty hard in this correction that we've been in across the crypto market, right? You know, we went up and rallied to an all-time high over $3. And then ever since then, it's just been steady down with just, you know, a little bit of volatility, but overall just this kind of oppressive downtrend without being able to really put in a convincing bottom. And in fact, maybe even more kind of worrisome recently is we're starting to break through some of this these zones of support that had lasted for quite a while, right? The $1 mark had acted as kind of roughly support for quite a while for ADA, and we have now broken down below it, and as I record now, trading um, at around 84 cents. So I think the question on a lot of people's mind is what should we make of this, right? So is this just a buying opportunity or is this something more concerning? So what I wanna to do today is talk a little bit about kind of the bullish and bearish cases for Cardano from a multiple different perspectives, um, some being more about network usage, some more from fundamental considerations, things like that, to give kind of both sides as I see it of the equation. Reasons why they're, why one might be bullish on, Car on Cardano, reasons why one might be bearish. So I'm gonna start off with the bullish case and just go through a few things that I'm looking at that suggest potentially positive things for Cardano and saying that ADA is not by any means done yet. So the first thing I want to talk about is just some on-chain data. So that what I'm showing you here is um, uh, from Masari. And what I'm showing you here is the um, active transaction count for ADA across its history. And so what we can see is that obviously, you know, as we went into the bull run in um, early 21, then obviously the number of people um, using Cardano increased. You know, there was increasing interest in um, in the crypto space, and then also, you know, ADA being one of the assets that really pumped very quite hard during that time. You know, ADA really exploded in value coming into this this bull run here. We saw a lot of people enter the space. Then, as we entered into the summer, some people left. We saw an exodus of some of that interest, and this tends to happen in crypto when prices are going up. People get interested. People come in. Prices go down. People lose interest. They leave. But then we saw a big climb leading into the all-time high. But interestingly, uh, the number of active um, addresses has been kind of constant, if not if not slightly higher than it was actually at the prior all-time high. Now, of course, that's generally speaking probably a good thing, right? Oftentimes with crypto networks, the more users on the network, the more valuable the network is from a more fundamental perspective. And there have been some people who have been really arguing that this is one of the key drivers of of a crypto network's value. Now, I'm not gonna say it's the main thing or it's the only thing, but it certainly is something to watch, that the more users, oftentimes the more valuable the network. And so in some ways, even though ADA's price has really corrected quite precipitously off its all-time high of $3, you know, down now being down closer to, you know, 84 cents or so, it's quite impressive in a way that so many people have stuck around through all of that decline. Now, obviously we don't really know who, what these accounts are. Are they really new people or are they just existing players who are spreading their coins out over a, a wider number of wallets? We don't really know. Now, obviously one of the possibilities here is that um, Cardano's ecosystem is starting to come online, right? You know, we've known for a while that one of the potentials or one of the elements of a Cardano in terms of its potential was the ecosystem it was going to try to develop. And so if you go on to here, I'm showing you um, Cardano cube um, .io, they just have kind of a, a, a mapping of all the different apps that are being built on top of Cardano. And that was one of the things in terms of the potential that's often been touted for Cardano that was going to have this massive thriving ecosystem. Now Cardano had been a lot has been a lot slower to put out its ecosystem that a lot of other platforms, right? You know, with smart contracts only coming online last fall, but it's starting to roll out. And so maybe that's one of the reasons why we're seeing active uh, addresses stay higher is there's just more things to do with ADA now than there used to be. You know, before smart contracts, the main things you'd be doing with ADA is just, you know, passing them back and forth to different people. It's just, just transactions, which is only a limited amount of use case there. 
But once you suddenly have things like DeFi and other things on the on the network, now there's more utility in ADA. You have to use ADA for transaction fees for all of that kind of stuff that you're doing. It might make sense why there's some continued activity in these these wallets because you know there's more of a use case for the token. Another thing that's interesting to look at is just transaction volume on um, the network. And this is useful again, because this is just how much are people actually using the network in some degree. So active addresses, just number of addresses, sort of gets at, at usage. But this is just talking about just in, in terms of raw numbers, how much transaction is happening on the network. And what we can see is that, you know, the highest point of transaction was at basically the all time high for, um, or ADA right around that that point and then it had really dropped off since then but we see it's actually starting to build back up again more recently which again could be seen as a bullish sign right that if more people are starting to use the network that might mean that there's greater value and if we can if we can see this trend up with time more that might be a sign that if people are really using the network a lot that its value might be increasing as well and that maybe the price could follow that as well going into the future Another thing to, to watch is the um, total value locked in DeFi on Cardano. So this is DeFi Llama I'm showing you here right now. And again, the, the thing to watch here is that uh, with these types of layer one networks, you know, Cardano being a layer one blockchain where uh, decentralized applications are supposed to build on top of it, what we've seen is that really the a lot of value has been placed on these layer one blockchains that have thriving DeFi ecosystems, right? You know, uh, Solana uh, launched into its parabolic move in the summer, partly due to its DeFi ecosystem. Um, Avalanche, in my opinion, definitely really saw its price appreciate because of its DeFi ecosystem. Um, Phantom as well is another one, point two for that. Um, Terra even, slightly different focus, but again, it's DeFi uh, uh, applications are why Terra Luna has been doing so extremely well recently again that's a little bit of a unique case a little bit different but again the idea that that it seems like in crypto right now for layer ones uh DeFi is something that people look at for valuing a chain and the more that people are using a chain for its DeFi ecosystem the more value that chain tends to get because again you need the token to use the DeFi platforms and then also you might use the token to be adding liquidity into into pools you might be using the token the lend or whatever the case may be there's just more things to do with it there's more utility and so the more value locked the more uh value that might be ascribed to the network and then also just brings in the speculative interest as well if your chain is really um, exploding on its ecosystem that also makes speculators think that it's going to go up and that also brings the price up so you can see is that really the DeFi ecosystem for um, for uh, ADA is, or for Cardano is quite young, right? Just this year, it's really gotten off the ground. It's currently sitting up at a, almost um, a quarter of a billion dollars currently, and a lot of that is in Sunday Swap, which was kind of the first um, decentralized exchange to launch our Cardano. But other ones are are coming online, and that's something that I'm going to be watching personally. Is just as more of this eco this DeFi ecosystem kind of um, comes online. And, and gets launched, how much value gets brought into the ecosystem, right? How much comes in? Because again, that can be a catalyst. If a bunch of money pours in all of a sudden, that can be something that can lift price higher. So something to keep an eye on, in my opinion. Another reason why we might be relatively bullish on Cardano's DeFi ecosystem is that one of the advantages that Cardano has is an existing kind of community, kind of a consisting, uh, 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 existing core um, user base that owns the asset you know cardano is one is still in the top 10 you know it slipped down from where it had been at its, its all-time high back in the fall but still quite quite up there it's kind of trading blows with solana currently in terms of its market cap and again one of the advantages of having this kind of um, network effect already existing we have this many users essentially already or people already owning cardano which you know has brought its price up is that then if there's a thriving DeFi ecosystem that and that emerges as well as the other elements of the ecosystem that get built out aside from DeFi, then there might just be a lot of people is kind of sitting on the sidelines waiting to get in and use use their ADA for that reason because there very well could just be a bunch of people who are at most just staking their ADA but might want to use it for other things if those things become um, possible. So again, as I mentioned with staking, if we move over here to stakingrewards.com, you know, they're showing that almost a little under 70% of people are staking ADA right now. So that's currently a, a very heavy use case of ADA is just to stake it. 
But of course, the other thing that's important with staking is that this is in and of itself kind of a bullish thing, right? When people stake on one of these chains, they're eff effectively taking that ADA out of circulation. They're adding friction between um, their ac uh, uh, accessibility of the ADA and then them being able to sell it, right? And the idea is that the more friction there is between um, wherever people's coins are or people's tokens are and their ability to sell it on an exchange, for example, the more friction there is there, the less likely that they are going to end up actually ending up deciding or the more that price might have to appreciate for them to decide it's worth going through the effort of, of unstaking or giving up that staking reward yield to then sell the asset. And so in, in a sense, the more percentage of the tokens that are being staked, kind of the, you can think of the floor maybe being raised a little bit, that there's just less money that's just immediately available to flood onto exchanges and sell, that there's just a little bit more work that people would have to do to get the assets on the exchange to sell it. And that just makes it less likely for tons of supply to be as easily easy to come onto the market as if, um, as for tokens that where very few people are staking, where they might just be sitting there waiting for a pump and then they'll just dump it. So that could be another thing that you can see as being a bullish thing, the fact that so many people are, are participating in Cardano staking. But again, the other thing that might happen here is that if there become kind of other use cases for ADA in its ecosystem, people might um, start using it for that. So even if that means that they're not staking, if they're locking up in DeFi, that's again, still that friction, which is still largely probably a good thing for price. So those are a number of things that I think are kind of bullish cases for ADA right now that we're not seeing a um, total capitulation in active um, addresses that this is still remaining relatively high or actually about as high as it's been, even though price has dropped pretty precipitously. I think that is a good sign. We're seeing transaction volumes start to tick up again um, as well, suggesting people are using the network. That's a good thing. Plenty of things being built um, and there is uh, a growing amount of, of uh, value being locked on DeFi. So the ecosystem is growing, although again, Ada had or Cardano had a bit of a slower start there. We have an existing base of people who own Ada who might be looking to use it. And we're seeing that a lot of people are blocking up their tokens or, you know, staking their tokens, adding friction between their tokens and exchanges, which again might mitigate dumps. So that's the bullish case. Now let's talk though about the bearish case. Because again, it's it's vitally important, especially with any altcoin, which are the riskier end of the crypto space be aware of both sides of the equation. You know, it's really dangerous in my opinion to put on your blinders and only focus on one side, be it the bullish or the bearish case. To only focus on the bullish things and ignore the bearish things, or to only focus on the bearish things and ignore the bullish things. That's probably not gonna serve you well going forward. In my opinion, my personal opinion, it's good to be open-minded with every asset, with every investment, and take into consideration both sides of the equation. So I think it's important to talk about these bearish things as well. And I think some of them are very important to keep in mind. So the one thing that I want to talk about, which is in my um, mind is pretty eye popping and something that I'm personally see is very concerning for ADA, at least more in the short term, is the percentage of, of holders who are in loss right now. And that's what this is getting at. So this is a, into the block um, dot com and they have metrics over for a bunch of different coins where they can basically assess the cost basis of different um, addresses or different holders and tell you what percentage are in the money or in profit versus what what percentage are in the loss and we can see which is very concerning the vast majority of people right now are in loss and one of the reasons why this makes a ton of sense is if we look over at the um, basically how long different holders have held ADA, we can see that a very small percentage of people have been holding ADA for more than a year, or a small percentage of the, the ADA in the network have been held for more than a year. Most of them are, are um, within a year from today uh, old. So most of them being between one to 12 months ago, and then 15% being in the last month. And so from that perspective, no duh, most people are out of the money because if we go back a year from right now, March of last year, ADA was trading at a higher level than it's trading right now. So anyone who bought anywhere in the last year is going to be in loss right now. Um, that's just the way it's going to be. And the only people who are really going to be in profit reliably are the older hands, the people who have been holding since these earlier values back here. And so what that means, what's worrisome about that is it could mean there'd be a lot of resistance as we try to push back up through these levels. Because again, what people oftentimes can do, especially shorter term holders who might only be there for the speculation, might not really be there 
for the long run is that for these folks here who are in loss, if price is able to track back up to those cost bases, they might just say, thank God I got back. I'm just going to get out. I'm going to just take, the, I'm just going to get out at break even. Why am I going to hang around? Because again, if people are only here for the speculation and they've just endured a lot of pain holding through this drawdown, they might just see that ray of sunshine and just get out, not want to stay in for any longer. So as we're tracking back through these, these prior levels of support, in my opinion, they very well could act as strong levels of resistance, given how the massive percentage of people in the network who are out of profit, you know, almost 90%, eight, around 85%, well, I'll just be exact. 86% being in loss right now, that's not a good thing. That's not what you want to see because that means that there's going to be a lot of resistance potentially as we go back through. Now, who knows? Obviously, you know, it's crypto. Anything could happen. If there's some ground shift in the market, people might be willing to hold through those levels. But I personally see this as a, being a very bearish sign. It's not generally good for a network for so many people to be in loss. That might just mean that they're looking to get out whenever their cost basis comes back. So that's, in my opinion, a point for the bears. The fact that so many people are in loss, there's, the ADA's gonna have a lot of work on his hand to be able to get back up to its all-time high from that perspective, in my opinion. The other thing that's important to note is that the launch of Cardano's ecosystem has not been auspicious in a lot of ways. It's been, it's been pretty rough, um, especially just with the um, Sunday Swap um, DEX launch. Now, obviously it's just one decentralized app, so generalizing from this too much is a little bit questionable, but certainly it didn't leave a great taste in people's mouths. The idea that the first kind of big decks launching on Cardano really stumbled out of the gates. There were tons of problems with people's transactions just failing, not working, or taking forever to go through. It really has not been a spectacular, uh, was not a spectacular launch, and it made a lot of people quite upset that um, they'd been waiting and waiting for all this promise about the ecosystem of Cardano and then it really did not get off to a great start. Now, again, that's just one D app, you know, a little bit questionable to generalize from it too much. But really, the fact that Cardano has been so slow to get its ecosystem out and then to have that happen immediately. And also, Sunday Swap had been delayed in when it was put out from when they originally thought because they had come into problems on their test net that they had to fix. And then even with all those fixes, it still had a lot of issues when it went um, live. That's not a great thing. And that's one of the things I do think is concerning about Cardano to some degree is that with crypto, attention is a very precious commodity that kind of more so than a lot of markets potentially, just given how volatile crypto is, attention also shifts as a result. When one asset's pumping, that's just a lot of fo focus gets put onto that new asset. People are really talking about it. And then they just abandon it and go to the next thing when that next thing's pumping. That a lot of um, interest in crypto really depends on what the price is doing. Is it pumping? Is it dumping? It's dumping, people kind of lose interest. And so really with, with Cardano taking so long to get their ecosystem put out, one of the risks of this is that even though there's so much that ADA's or that Cardano's um, hoping to have out there, the problem is that if that interest is just bleeding away and people just don't care about ADA anymore, they don't care about Cardano, they're caring about the next hot um, layer one that's out there or next hot project or whatever. And even if Cardano is able to realize a lot of this, to some degree, at, at, at a certain point, if you lose too much interest, it might be too late. And then other things might have already filled that vacuum, taking all of the users into their ecosystems. And then uh, Cardano is kind of playing on the back foot at that point because of that. In some ways, you know, it might have been nicer if Cardano had been able to put out this ecosystem around all the hype, kind of those hype periods that might, or had more things ready to go when smart contracts were launched, to maybe retain that interest for longer. Now, obviously, that's just one perspective. Who knows what could happen? And certainly, you could you could argue in the long term, if a lot of use case comes into the space, then value could come back. But at least in the short term, that's something that I think could be more concerning, that if interest is being lost, that's not great. And we can see that if we look at the Google search trends, just as one metric of interest, for example, just how many people are searching for Cardano, we can see that it's really just been in a downtrend. You know, Even in, at the point of the all-time high, it wasn't able to get back up to where it was in the spring of um, 21. Now, obviously we know in the crypto space that retail interest has been waning across the board. And so it is not unique in this by any, any stretch of the imagination, but certainly it, it, the downtrend is not a good thing to see. And that you ideally like to see interest at least stay constant as the ecosystem comes online that more people might get into it. 
So those are just some bearish things that I'm currently watching. So I gave the bullish case, gave the bearish case. It's up to you to make your opinion of what you think is the more compelling case, right? Because again, I want to just lay out the facts as I see them. And I'm, I leave it up to you to make up your mind of which is more compelling versus not compelling. I'm not going to sit here and say that I know which side is correct. And I'm not certainly not going to tell you which side you should fall on. It's up to you to form your own thesis. But those are some things that I am watching. And to wrap us up, I do just want to talk a little bit about our risk indicator here, just to say what it's thinking right now. And then, and then how we might think about this in the context of whatever thesis you might have about ADA going forward. So I'm showing you here the long-term UDPI. This is our risk indicator. So, so higher scores are higher risk, lower scores are lower risk. The price history of um, ADA over time color-coded to the UDPI or risk model. And what you can see is that it does a good job identifying these high and the low risk points in ADA's history. And you'll notice that coming off the all-time high here, this red zone, this danger zone telling us a correction was likely, we're now down back into the green zone not too dissimilar to what we've seen in the past down here. So when you look at the raw output of the risk model across time, that's what I'm showing you here. And so we, you know, we really um, were down in the kind of the doldrums for a long time. We kind of at these, these uh, realizing a lot of downside potential, a lot of, lot, with a lot of upside potential kind of remaining out of reach for a long time. And then, then Ada kind of flipped the board, shot up, realized a bunch of upside potential, and then hung out at kind of neutral to high levels of risk throughout there, suggesting it was realizing a lot of its realistic upside potential. It wasn't going down into that really kind of realizing a lot of that downside potential that it had. But now we have. We've broken down below where we were in the summer, in fact. So we've broken below where we were in the summer. And we're now going back down into the same range that we have been sitting at for a long time in Ada's history back here. And I think it's important now to, to take this into, into the context of that thesis, right? So if your thesis is bullish, then this looks pretty good. You know, this chart is something that you might want to see because if you've been looking for places to reaccumulate ADA, then, you know, we saw how well it worked out last time, right? If you accumulate down here, you don't really care too much if you're spending 10 cents for ADA, even 20 cents for ADA. Certainly you're happy you're spending five or three cents for ADA and then it goes up over a dollar. That's just great value. And so if ADA is offering that kind of um, kind of opportunity again, although obviously the gains won't be unrealistic, expect the gains to be as much coming over here is because ADA's market cap is so much larger. But if it's offering a, that same kind of, of, of opportunity again, where it's going to, you know, in the future, if we're trading here down around a dollar, under a dollar, then we're going to be up at, you know, five plus dollars in not too long, for example. You know, that would just be a great opportunity. And that would be maybe what people would think with a bullish thesis, right? If you do think that Cardano is going to be able to blow past its prior all-time high and go and claim new all-time highs, then this is just great value and, and the UDPI is reflecting that. But if you have a bearish outlook, then you might interpret this a little bit differently, right? That if you think that ADA has put in its, its uh, all-time high and that's not going to ever get back up here, that this was it, this was the, the peak for ADA and it's all downhill from here, then you know, this is not going to be looking very attractive to you, most likely. And you think might think that at best, maybe we'll just get some relief rallies, but they won't get us back up here, in which cases may, maybe you're waiting for lower prices before you do that. Or maybe you even expect having the UDPI to get all the way back down to some of these really low levels around negative four before we get a reversal like we've seen in the past. You know, that's, that's plausible. And that's where it's, again, it's up to you to form that thesis and then interpret these risk levels as you will. Because again, if you think eight is going to $5, Anything below $5 looks like value, and the further down it gets, the better it is. But if you expect ADA to go to zero, then not a lot looks like great value. And so that's where, really, with these kind of risk indicators, it has to be taken in the context of your broader thesis. If the asset's going to trend up with time, then this is going to give you um, indications of when good accumulation and distribution zones are. But if you think the asset's going to zero, then you're not really too concerned. You're probably just not really all that interested. Or at the very least, you might just take a short-term swing trade but you're probably not in there for the long haul. Now, of course, none of this is financial advice. Again, I'm not going to tell you which side you should be on. I'm just going to lay out the facts up to you to make up your mind if you want to be bullish or bearish on the asset. That's just the way that I see it right now. So to end us, I just end this video off. I just want to um, show the different time frames of the UDPI. So I showed the long term, which cares about moves 
play out kind of over months to years. I want to show the different time frames here. So the long term, I was just showing you negative 2.25. So again, it thinks the realistic upside outweighs the downside. But again, if you're a bear, if you're a bearish on ADA, you might see this being a lot more in uh, feasible or plausible than this. If you're a bull, maybe you see it differently. Medium term, so this is uh, uh, weeks to months in the time frame it cares about. Uh, in the negative, still negative 1.57. And short term, a little bit higher, negative 1.18. Suggesting that again, there's more realistic upside than downside potential in the short term, but that it's a little bit more neutral. So that's where we stand um, with ADA. And so, really, in my opinion, it's up, it's up to you to form your opinion. One of the things that I do just think, and this is kind of agnostic to bullish or bearish, but I do just think that the next year is going to be important for ADA and frankly for a lot of other crypto projects. That I think that with layer one blockchains, we're seeing a shift now and that people care less about potential potential kind of buys a, a chain less and more about showing value, demonstrating value seems to be more what people are looking for. And so as chains like AVAX um, or as like Solana or, you know, buying a smart chain and look how well it's been doing as they show their utility with with applications on them, with, um, you know, total value locks being locked up on them, you know, look at Terra Luna showing its its use case and really getting a lot of value out of that. I think that's where we're, a potential paradigm shift we're seeing. That before we were still kind of in the development stages for a lot of layer one protocols besides ethereum you know which has been um going humming along for quite a while now for all the kind of alternative layer one blockchains and seeing a lot of people just kind of uh, uh before in the past there's a lot about the potential that people were betting on now i think the rubber might need to meet the road all right if you like the content remember to subscribe to the channel give the video a like and follow us on twitter and remember the udpi we're all gonna make it